Blessing to have that man here. I tell you what, it's going to be packed here, and if we're going to pack next door too, I'm more than sure. So make sure you get here. Let's all the kids can go with Brother Simon and Liz. And matter of fact, it's it's Brother Simon's birthday today for some reason. <laughs> He's 25 again. All right. Times two. All right. No. <laughs> all the are the, are the youth staying here? They're staying here. All right, I got the youths with me out here in the front row. Isn't that awesome? They're here in the front row. Awesome. All right, the, I'm going back. We're doing rewind and rewind as I'm rewinding. Am I saying it right? Rewind, rewind, rewind. I'm rewinding all the way back to 2010 when I did a sermon called Supernatural. And so we're, that's why this whole thing is called rewind because I'm, I'm going to go back and just cover some, uh, some, uh, some places where we were. And some things that I covered, and I said, you know what, I love this supernatural series that we did because, you know, the, world, the supernatural plays a whole big part of our lives. It plays a big part of our lives. Can I tell you this? You are more spiritual than you are natural. And you think, well, no, I'm more flesh than I am spirit. No, you're more spirit than you are flesh. You're a flesh guy. You're a spirit being experiencing a flesh environment. But your spirit, you came from God, and your parents wrapped you in flesh, okay? And so that's the idea you got to remember. I came from God. I didn't come from a tap hole, okay? I didn't, I didn't come from any other place. I didn't come from some algae sitting in, a, in a, some backyard, and I just, there I came. No. You came from God. All spirits come from God. And so if we are spirit beings... Isn't it important that we should know about the spirit world? That should be a very important part of our, of our lives. If, if we are spirit beings, then we should know what spirit beings are. The thing about it is, there's a lot of times there's an overemphasis of, of spirituality, you can say, and then there's an underemphasis of spirituality. This overemphasis is over here that there's a devil in everything. There's a devil at that red light. The devil gave me that red light. The devil gave me, and you're t speaking in tongues at red light. Sha -ta 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 -ta. You're getting mad at people, you know, parking spaces, and they're like, that's the devil. And you're rebuking the lady, and the poor lady's like, what are you doing? Come out of her. Come out of what? Everything is a devil. Everything is a demon. Everything has a devil. And you go on these witch hunts, and we think, ooh. I saw the devil in my toast. He had a face on it. He was on my postosties. I saw it. And we think that. Postosties. I'm way out there, am I? I'm somewhere over there. And we go all devil hunting, and we're so more dark-minded than we are light-minded. Tell you what, if you go looking for a devil, you will find a devil. You will find him. Some, sometimes we make it easy. We go watch these horror flicks and we watch these other things and we say, come right on into my house and get in my mind and just keep on being there because I'm inviting you to come into this place called darkness. And darkness can only exist where you allow darkness to exist. See, that's the, that's the area where Satan has dominion and authority that God gave him. God says, you have authority and dominion in dark places. But where light exists, you have no authority and you have no power where light exists. So wherever there's darkness in your life, you give ground to the devil. Did I say God gave that ground? No, you gave it. God says, where my light, where my light has come, the, the Bible sheds light on things. And wherever there's light, darkness cannot exist. Light came on, and guess what? Darkness said, I'm out of here. As soon as we turn the lights off, darkness comes in. Darkness has to obey the light. So going back to supernatural things, supernatural things exist. Whether you believe it or not, whether you believe that there is a devil, whether there is a hell, there is, there is no hell. I'm going to tell you this. There is a devil, there is a God, there is a hell, and there is a heaven. Whether you like it or not, it's there. There is a time when the devil is going to go to hell. He is not in hell. Do you know where he's at? He's here on this earth. People think, well, the devil's in hell. He's not in hell. You think he wants to be there? He ain't going to be there. But one day, the Bible says that the God will take the enemy and cast him into the pit of hell. 
along with all the minions, and that's where he'll stay. And he's trying to take as many young people and as many people, as many children, as many adults as with him because he knows his time is short. He says, I'm going to take as many marriages as I can take. I'm going to take as many kids as I can take. I'm going to take as many churches as I can take, as many pastors, as many people. Like, like I'm going to take nations. I'm going to take countries. I'm going to take presidents. I'm going to take them all with me. Because his sole purpose in life is to what? Kill, steal, and what? Destroy. That's his MO. That's what he wants to do. He's come to do that. And guess what? He is a history major. He has been from the very beginning to the end, and he knows how mankind operates. He knows what man can fall for, and he knows what man can't fall for. He knows what the Word of God can do, and he knows what the Word of God cannot do in a, in a Christian's life that doesn't allow God to be in his, their, their life. Amen? He knows how powerful you are when you pray. He knows how powerful you are when you have the Word of God living inside of your mind. He knows how powerful you are and how powerful your prayers are. And you think your powers are, are, you know, you think your powers don't have any power punch, but they do. He tricks you into make you think that what you're doing is not making any difference. Why are you praying? Why are you praying? It ain't going to make a difference. Look, you've prayed several times and nothing's happened. So why pray now? Why don't you just give up? Why are you giving your tithes to a church? They're not doing anything. They're not going to go anywhere. Things are not happening. You're just throwing away your money. Just quit. And he gets you to quit. And he gets you to stop. He says, no, don't, don't talk about Christianity at school. You're going to be a nerd. You're be, no, 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 don't be that way. No, 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 don't stand up. Yeah, laugh at all those jokes at work because you don't want to be labeled a Christian at work. But then what ends up happening, you fall for it. And you're no longer a light in a dark place. See, that's why God has you where you're at. Can I just tell you that? You think, well, I got there because of me. God has you where you are because there is darkness there and there needs to be light. So God promotes you into places so that you can be a light in a dark world. Because we've come to bring light. Amen? Are y'all getting my groove here? Supernatural. The, 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 the realm of supernatural. And then there's an overemphasis, underemphasis where there is no hell, there is no heaven, there is no devil, there is no demons, there is no Holy Spirit, there is no spirit world, there is nowhere. There's just all this fake stuff. Y'all just get it in your mind. When you die, you're just like a dog. I'm dead. Dead. I'm just, I'm dead. You know what? I'd rather believe the other and if just in case that there is another world, I'm ready. <laughs> Just in case I'm ready, you know what I mean? I'd rather be ready than go, ah, forget it. I'd rather be ready. He says, you know, just in case I'm going to give my life to God. <laughs> because what if there is another place? What if there is a, such a thing called the rapture that's going to happen, and right now we can be taken like that? Of course, there's other things that need to happen. But what happens if, if God decides to come and take us like this? Well, I don't believe in the rapture. Well, you will believe it. How about if I bet you $800? I want to bet anybody $1,000 in the rapture, and then when it happens, I'll pay you, but I won't be here. <laughs> I'll bet you a million dollars. <laughs> I'll bet you a million dollars if the rapture's true, and then when it happens, just come looking for me. <laughs> you won't be able to find me. You can have all my stuff because I'm not going to need it because they, they don't sell U-Hauls, spiritual U-Hauls, when you're going to heaven because you know what? I'm going on streets of gold. And a mansion made for me in glory. And if you don't believe none of that, I'll take yours. Because I'll just say, he don't want his. He told me. <laughs> I tell you, his stuff is real. But if you don't believe it, it's fine. But let me give you a biblical perspective about this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. Though we live in this world, we do not wage war as the world does. They fight with weapons. We, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. On the contrary, they are divinely powered to demolish strongholds. Because we live in this spirit, spiritual world or physical world, there is a spiritual world raging on. Right now, right above you, there's a war raging right now. Some of you are waging a war, and you're thinking, what am I going to do on this Labor Day? Hmm. Is it the T-bone or the... Some of you are waging that war right now. 
It's like, gosh, it's so cold in here. It's so hot in here. Some of you are going right now. There's a war going on for your attention because the word of God is going out. And the enemy of your soul doesn't want the word of God to sit in a place where it can then develop into something. See, when the enemy attacks you, he's not after you. He's after the word of God in you. We take it personal. The enemy's attacking me. No, he's not. He's after the word that's inside of you. Because he knows if the word of God gets in you, it's going to do powerful things. The Bible says that dunamis power, dynamite power lives inside of us. And so the Bible says that we live in a kingdom, and there's a kingdom of light, and there's a kingdom of darkness. And when we fight in the spirit, we don't use natural weapons. We don't use missiles and, you know, machine guns and Uzis and knives. We use, in the spirit world, we use spiritual weapons. Y'all with me? Spiritual weapons. Because that's how you take things down. That's how you take strongholds down. That's how you come against things. Because people think, well, I don't know. We engage in the enemy. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to go up against the devil, you know, because he might get mad. And if I, and if I engage the enemy, then what, he's going to come and engage me. Can I tell you this? He's going to engage you anyway. Because he don't fight fair. He fights dirty. And he's going to come, he's going to come at you whether you say, leave me alone, or whether you say, I don't want I don't know nothing. He's going to engage because the whole point of his, his MO is to steal kill and destroy and he's going to come at the weakest time of your life he's going to come at a time when you're weak when you're being overcome by stress when you're being overcome by things and he's going to come right in subtly see we think he's going to show up with two pitchforks a tail and a thing and say, Aha, i'm the devil <laughs> you and i would go you're the devil no i ain't even gonna believe you but he doesn't come like that he comes as this little pretty little thing at work. Hi, babe. You want to go to lunch? Because you looking good. You working out? Well, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that you ask. He comes subtly like a fisherman with a little lure. And he knows every lure that works for every one of y'all. Some of y'all are worms, Okay. Some of you are little pretty little feathers. Some of you are spoons. Some of you, he knows which one works for you. Because it won't work for this fish, but it'll work for that fish. And he's a master angler, and he knows how to go, whoop, and then take it away. And then, whoop, and then take it away. And all of this is done in the spirit. That's why the Bible says to be alert, to be attentive. Because the enemy that is like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. He can't devour everybody. He's not like the exorcist where he's like, I can't take it. He's levitating me everywhere. No, he's not going to do that. Because as soon as darkness touches light, darkness ceases to exist. So he can't come in into my light. The minute he touches me, he's touching God. Come on now. The minute he comes into your household, he's touching God. Y'all believe y'all don't believe me on that. As soon as he touches you, he's touching God. Amen? Because God lives in you. So they think, well, you know, in the Spanish you know, environment, they always think, oh, they're gonna throw a curse on me. You can't curse what's blessed. There's all these curses and curses and curses. And he's like, you know what? You can throw as many curses as you want. But the darkness cannot overcome the light. What just won right here? Light is winning in here. Darkness ain't winning. And if you think that darkness is going to overcome your light, then so be it unto you, the Bible says. It all depends on what you think. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Is this a little strong for y'all or is it all right? Okay. Ephesians 6, 10, finally be strong in the Lord and in the power, his mighty power. You do not have the power to naturally fight in the spiritual world. You need God on your life. You need God. In verse 11, put on the full armor of God that you can take stand against the devil's schemes. Notice what it says that you might take verse, verse 11. Go guys, go, go back one more. There we go. Uh, verse 11, the devil's scheme. Does the Bible say that you're to fight the devil? The, devil, the Bible says you don't fight against him. You fight against the devil's schemes. So he's like Wiley Coyote, okay? Wiley Coyote is, is always had schemes for the roadrunner. You know, he always had 
schemes. And he was always trying to go after, and he was always laying a trap and holes and dynamite and, and a pendulum that would come. He's always laying schemes, and that's what your enemy, the devil, does. He lays traps for you. But he's a defeated person. So why do I have to fight a defeated person if he's defeated? But I have to fight his schemes. I have to fight his, 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 his coming at me. I've got to know what is real and what is not. I've got to know what is a, a trap. I've got to know what all these things are. How do you know that, Pastor? How do you get to know that? It's with knowing. It's with being in the Spirit and knowing and allowing your Spirit to tell you what's real and what's of the enemy and what's not. You have an enemy, and his name is Satan. He hates your guts because you look like God. When God decided to make you and I, he looked in the mirror and he says, I'm going to make him like that. God is a three-part being. Spirit, he's God, the Holy Ghost, and there's Jesus. And so he decided to make us a three-part being. He made us a soul, a mind, and a spirit. He gave us a body. He gave us a soul. He gave us a spirit. We're a three-part being, just like God is a three-part being. We are made in the same image of God. God says, you can have power by your words because I have power by my words. He says, I give man authority. I give man dominion. We will give him dominion. You have dominion in this world. You can, you can curse your world, and you can bless your world with the words you speak, or you can do whatever you want with the words you speak because you are like God. I didn't say you are God, but you are like him. You are made in the image of him. You have dominion. You have the power and the ability to say no and yes in your life. Amen? Verse 12, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against rulers and against authorities, against powers of this world, against spiritual forces in heavenly places. The battle is not against people. Even though you think you've got the boss from hell, it is not against him. <laughs> it's not against the government. It's not against your neighbor or your ex-wife or your ex-husband. He is not the devil, okay? Even though you think, yeah, he's the devil. Not the devil. Let's keep it soup on that, all right? I don't need to hear amen. <laughs> I heard a lot of hands go up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Place I want you to amen, you're going to amen on the wrong one. The battle is against spiritual wickedness in the people, in the things. There's a spiritual world is as just as real as this natural world. And what you see with your eyes is not all that's really there. Right now, I'm broadcasting over a wireless mic, and this, there's, there's audio tr signals that are traveling across. You don't see it, but it's there. Right now, there's light rays going. You don't see it, but there's light rays. There's all these stuff going on right now over us, and you just don't see it. Whether you like it or not, it's there. But you can't see it, but we believe it. We all have cell phones, and everyone's got something, and we're now broadcasting, and there's these, all these things are going on right now. But you don't see it, but you believe it. Or else you wouldn't be carrying a phone and saying, well, I don't believe in phones and cell phones, that there's something out there. But you're carrying one, and that's proof to me that you believe in the unknown. Y'all with me? I want you to take note of this because when God created the natural world, he made it to operate the same way as the spiritual world. Because everything, I want you to learn this, everything that God created has to exist in an environment. When he created the, the, the trees, when he created the bushes, when he created all the plant life, he says in order for it to sustain life, it needs to have an environment called ground. Then he says, I'm going to make the things called fish of the air, fish and, the, and the, all the whales and the things. And so I'm creating these things, but they have to have a place to exist, an environment. He says, I'm going to create the ocean. Then he says, I'm going to make birds of the air, and I'm going to make... So I've got to create a place where they can be. And he created the air and the atmosphere for all these birds. So you and I, when he made you and I, he says, man needs to have an environment where he can sustain and where he can live. And he says, where man's going to live, it is in my world. The Bible says that where God exists, can I tell you where God exists? The Bible says God inhabits the what? The praises of who? 
So God comes and says, this is where I dwell. I dwell in your praise. I dwell in your worship. So if there's not worship and there's not praise in your life, God is not existing. He's not there. He's, he's not there. In, he's there in your, in your life. He's inside of your heart. But if you want God to come in the very presence of you, you start worshiping. He says, I'll, start come, I'll come right there. Just like everything needs an environment to exist, you need the environment to exist. That's why it's important for you to be here for praise and worship because that's the environment that you and I live in. That's where you and I grow. That's where you and I mature. That's where you and I get stronger. We get stronger as we, st as we get into worship and as we get into praise. So I encourage you, if there's no worship and praise, if all you hear is worship and praise here, then you're dying. Why? Because you're not connected. You're not growing. Always have an attitude of worship and praise. So let's, let me tell you this. If you're going through a battle right now, remember this. Write this down. You are never alone in your battles. If you're going through battles right now, you're never alone in your battles. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15, y'all wake? Hit the person next to him with the elbow. Tell him, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. I'll give you permission. There you go. There you go. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15. When the servant of man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army of horses and chariots surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord. Look what he says. Oh, my Lord. What shall we do? <laughs> oh, my Lord. What shall we do? The servant asked, don't be afraid. The prophet answered, those who are with us are more than those are with them. They're like, are you kidding me? Because I see a lot of people and horses, and I see a lot of dudes that look like the rock, okay? And they're about to attack us. Don't be telling me this. And look what happens. He says, then Elijah prayed, oh, Lord, open his eyes. Do you mean his, this eyes? What eyes? The spiritual eyes. Open his spiritual eyes because he's only watching by the natural. And look what he says. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked out and saw on the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Here we're thinking Elijah's like, oh, I'm by myself. God, no, 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 no. There's more that are with us than they are with them. And the same thing you and I can say every time the enemy comes and goes, ha, ha. You can say, no, there's more with me than there are with you. Because I believe only a third of, of the angels went with you, and I've got the rest of heaven. i got God himself that's with me. The Bible says God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And if God can give you a glimpse in the spiritual world, it would open up your eyes. But the Bible says we live a thing called faith. And faith is not easy. People say, well, faith is for wimps. Really? Believing on things that be not as though they are? That takes a lot of guts to believe that. The Bible says also that your prayers are far more powerful than you know. So you're never going through problems alone, and your prayers are far more powerful than you know. Look at Daniel chapter 10. They're going to put it up here. Daniel 10 chapter 12 through 14. Then he asked, he said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for your understanding to humble yourself before the Lord, your request has been heard in heaven. Does your prayers go to heaven? They're heard. The minute you pray, God, bam, it's there. Look what happens. I have come in to answer your prayer, but for 21 days the spirit, the prince of kingdom of Persia, blocked my way. Then Michael, the archangel, came to help me, and I left him there with the prince of kingdom of Persia. Now I'm here to explain what happens to your people in the future for this vision concerning the time yet to come. There's a war going on. As soon as you pray, the answer comes back, and the enemy tries to fight that, that answered prayer. So what you must do is you must fight and say, Lord, Father, I keep on. You keep on praying. You keep on praying. You keep on encouraging. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have answered me, that you have answered me. And it charges your angels. It charges the spiritual forces to continue to fight to bring that back down to you. You must continue to fight. The Bible says it doesn't say, it doesn't say faith comes by having heard. It comes by faith comes by what? Hearing and what? Hearing and what? Hearing. Have you heard enough messages in faith? No. You need to keep what? Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing until you get fully convinced. Because you are not fully convinced. You and I are not fully convinced. I can tell you what you're fully convinced about. You're fully, fully convinced that your name is whatever your name is. 
You're fully convinced. If I were to, if I were to tell any one of y'all, no, your name, Alex, is not Alex. You're now Jeffro. Okay, you're now, you're Jeffro. He's going to say, no, my name is Alex. No, your name is Jeffro. I like Jeffro. Your name is now Jeffro. I'm like, no, my name is not Jeffro. Anybody's name Jeffro, I'm sorry. Your name is Jeffro. He's going to say, no, I'm fully convinced because I heard my mama and my daddy tell me, that Alex, 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 and I got whippings when I didn't come, but when they said, Alex, he hears, he's fully convinced because he, he kept what? And what? His what? Name. He kept on hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. Now, is he fully convinced his name is Alex? Yes. What would it take for me to convince him that his name is Jeffro? Tell him. Tell him and get on his nerves. You're Jeffro. Okay, I'm Jeffro. <laughs> But it's by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. That's why if you hear a sermon, you go, I already heard about faith. Then you are, you, whoo, there's no teaching you. You got to be teachable. You cannot say, I've, I've already made it. Because we all are going to continue to learn, learn, learn. You got to say, oh, the pastor's got talking about faith again. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's, I got to hear it again. I got to hear it again. I got to hear more about, about miracles. I got to hear more about, about, about I got to hear more about, I got to hear, I got to hear, I got to hear, I got to hear, I got to hear it. How come whenever you get on the, on the radio, you don't have a problem hearing any, any songs over and over again? But when we hear sermons, oh man, he's talking about faith again. I've already heard this. Well, you keep on hearing that song on Pandora for I don't know how many times, but it's okay. It's okay to, to watch that movie one billion times, Star Wars Episode One. <laughs> you knew I was talking about here. See, it's okay for us to do all that. Watch the Super Bowl another ten more times just to watch it. How many of you guys watch ESPN and you're like watching the ESPN? You've already watched the first episode, the live one. You're like, well, I'm watching it again. And I'm watching it again. And I'm watching it again just in case I miss something. It's about repetitive. Get it in your system. Get it in your life. You must learn. The devil, I tell you what, is, he, is, he, he is after you and your attention. And I'm going to tell you this. What in hell do you want? What in hell do you want? Why do you want anything to do with hell? Anything to do with darkness? I need to know more about light. And so you must attract the light. You must get into the light. The Bible says that, Psalms 91, that when we get into, when a man or woman gets in on their knees, the Bible says you're not at your weakest, you're at your strongest. That the Bible talks about that whenever you go, whenever you go into prayer, the, devil, the Bible says you disappear. Bam. And the devil does not know where prayer exists, the Bible says. As soon as you get into prayer, it's like, poof. Now that's the spit, poof. I'm going to do it over here. Poof. <laughs> I think I got Andy from here. You got windshield wipers? You just disappear. Why? Because he doesn't know where you go whenever you're in prayer. That's why it's so important. Let me give you five things. Write them down real quick. Five things. Oh, Pastor, your, your real quicks are pretty long quick. Okay, but five things. Five things. Number one. Number five. Number one. Number five. Number one. Okay? He blinds the minds of unbelievers. What does the devil do? He blinds the minds of unbelievers. He blinds the minds. Notice it doesn't say he blinds the eyes. If y'all are following my tweets and my, and my things, I, I mentioned that. Notice that it says he blinds the minds. He doesn't blind your eyes. Your eyes are not what you see through. They, I mean, they're the only thing that you see through. Your eyes are the only thing that does is see through. It's your mind that determines what you just saw. We all are looking at certain, we can all look at something, and I can look at this base, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, man, it's a nice base, but somebody over here is going to say, no, it ain't. I got one better than that. Why? Look at Andy's all mad. <laughs> Why? Because you've made it up in your mind that I know something more than you what you know. I don't think that's a nice base, but we're all looking at the same base through the same eyes. It's all dependent on what, what you think. So that's why the Bible says that the enemy comes to blind the, the mind. That's why the, word, the Bible says to wash your what? Your mind with the word of God. 
Wash your mind with the word of God. Because the enemy tries to come in, and right now he's trying to stop you, and he wants to stop the word of truth. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see. Again, he's talking about mind and seeing. The glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. The Bible says to see with your mind. Haven't you heard that a, a, a words paint pictures? It paints pictures. I got a, I got a word I got to give you. I just got it. Okay. First um, Kings chapter 19. I want, I want you to see this real quick. First Kings chapter 19. Watch this. Elijah is up against Jezebel. You remember this story? Jezebel? Y'all remember this? Okay, watch this. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also, how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent the messenger to Elijah, saying, saying, So let the gods do to me, uh, Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more if I do not make your life as the one of them by tomorrow, by this time. In other words, what you did to my prophets, I'm going to do to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you. Watch this, verse 3. When he saw that, when he saw that, he rose and ran for his life. When he saw that, she's talking. And it says, when he saw it. Where did Elijah see it? In his mind. Did she show him a picture? <laughs> Sent him a video? Check that out. Sent him a little vine? And it's just showing him chopping the head off. No. All she did was what? Say something. And he what? Saw it with his what? With his mind. And that minute he did what? I'm gone. So what you, what you hear and what you say has a big determinant in your life. Number two. Number two. He does this. He steals God's word from you as soon as you get it. That is why you must keep what? Hearing and, and the Bible says that when everyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away. Okay, verse number three, he sets traps to capture you. He sets traps to capture you. Just like a possum, you want to catch him, you just find out his habits, where he comes across that tree, what he likes. He likes dog food. What is he what? What is he after? You find it out, and then you set a trap, and you, you stab him, and you get him. Whatever area of weakness that you have, that's the area that he's going to come at you. If I'm fighting somebody, I am not going to go after his strength. I'm going to go after his weakness. I'm going to pop him somewhere where he's just looking vulnerable. Because why? I'm not going to go after his strength. He's got a build like this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to hit him on his chest. Because, yeah, I'm going to be right there, right on his arm. He looks strong right there. I'm going to hit him there. I'm going to go after the weakest part of him. And so the enemy comes at the weakest part. Just when you said, I'm going to stop partying. Somebody says, hey, I'm having a keg party. <laughs> as soon as you say, I'm going to purify my mind. I'm not going to look at no more things. And then you click, click, click. And you don't want to click anymore. All of a sudden, you're like, okay, we're getting out of debt. You flip it. There's a sale at Macy's. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. That's a sign, Jesus. It's a sign, honey. It's a sign. Nothing against the ladies that win last night, okay? Y'all were divinely appointed to go do that. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> Number four. He wants to, he fights to stop your forward motion. Number four, he fights to stop your forward motion. If you're, if you're going to get out of debt, all of a sudden, honey, we're getting out of debt. All of a sudden, things start breaking down. Oh, my gosh, what about this debt thing? All of a sudden, you know, sometimes we're going to have a great marriage. And then all of a sudden, you come to church and have the fight of the decade before you get out of the parking lot. <laughs> like, ah, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you, Jesus. Honey, come here. Come here, honey. Come here. Honey. Honey, darling. Darling. Everybody's on good behavior, right? Everybody's on good behavior. Then they get back all in. Shh, click. Hmm? 
Come on, I just found you there. I just read your mail. Because it looks like our mail, too. We're all the same. We're all the same fellas in the same ship. Fellowship. We're all on the same ship, okay? We're all going through the same things. No one is just out of this world. Come on, number five. Satan plans to destroy you. He plans to take you out. That's his plan. He wants to do that. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be self-controlled. Be alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a lion looking for he may devour. So who's in charge and who's responsible for your life? What does it say? It's be self-controlled. Who's responsible? Me. God made you in charge of this world. It's not up to God. People say, well, it's up to God, whatever God wants. No, it's whatever you want. God says, I gave them dominion over this world. The world belongs to him. It's up to you and I what we want to do in this world. So it's up to you and I. He can't just be after everyone, the Bible says. He has to, he has to be strategic. He can't just come into your house. He just can't come into people. But unless you give him the authority, then he will. Y'all getting this? Because it's good. And you need this. In your life. Y'all take a couple more, well, five more, five more minutes? I mean, give me five more minutes. I mean, five, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Woo! I just counted 50 minutes right there. That was quick. I was, I was awake. <laughs> I saw some of you like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Y'all fell for it this time again. All right, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. You're going to put on the full armor of God. I've given you the bad. I'm going to give you the good. You put on the full armor of God. Number one, helmet of salvation. It protects you. What does it do? Men in those days used to wear this helmet, huge helmet, and it would, it would, it would guard them from this thing called the double-edged sword. It was a broad sword, and what it would do is it would protect them because the whole purpose of that sword was to decapitate you. And so they would put this helmet on these, these men, and what it would do is it, the two-edged sword, and the edges of the devil's sword is called discouragement and doubt. And he comes with discouragement and doubt, and the helmet of truth, the helmet of salvation, reminds you that you are saved. It reminds you that you have a God in you. It points out that what he tries to do is he points out failure, sins, problems. He tries to get you to be self-confident in yourself. You lose confidence in love. You lose hope in the future. And your salvation, the helmet, keeps that from deteriorating. It protects you. Number two, the breastplate of righteousness. You wear that. It protects your heart. It, used to, it, it would protect the heart and the, and the organs and all the internal organs. And so the breastplate of righteousness, it, there, it was there to keep you right in a right standing with God. And so the breastplate of righteousness will help you to live a right style, a living, a lifestyle. There's so much more I can get into it, but it's too deep. But the breastplate of righteousness would help you to live a right way because he said, I'm in a right standing with God, and I don't want to lose that right standing with him. And whenever I sin, it, it separates me from God, and I don't want to be separated from the Father. I want to be close to the Father. Amen? And so the breastplate does that. The breastplate keeps your heart pure, and it keeps your spirit alive. Amen? Now the two, the, uh, and the prodigal son did this. The prodigal son, when he came in, the, the father did this. He was smelling like pigs. He had been eating with pigs. He had been just doing all kinds of just horrible. He stunk. And the Bible says that the father gave him a cloak and covered him in all that stench and all that craziness so that he, the father looked at him and he didn't no longer see the stench. He now saw the robe that he gave him. And he, every time the father looked at him, he says, I see righteousness. I see authority. I see, I see the cloak that I just put on you. Amen. So when God sees you, he doesn't see your sin. He doesn't see your ugliness. He doesn't see your past. He doesn't see what you did last night. He sees the blood of Jesus Christ all over you, the sin, the, the, the cross that was shed for you. He looks and he sees, that's where I see. I see righteousness. Amen. God sees that. Just like kids, when my kids, when they went through stuff and they were all, you know, getting all messy and everything, I go, ooh, I don't want to touch them. No, I pick them up. Even when they're all messy and everything, I still pick them up Why they're my kids. I look, beyond the, uh, I look beyond all the stuff and I pick them up. Did they do anything for me? No. Because they're my child, I'll, I'll do something for them. Number two, the, another, uh, the other thing is the shield of faith. The shield was a curved fa uh, uh, shield and it was curved and it, it, had a, it had a ball in the middle that was pointed. And this purpose of the shield, the reason why it was curved, it was four foot by two feet 
and it was curved so that when, the, when you came against somebody, it would deflect, and so it wouldn't be a, a blunt object. It would go off. So if they came at you, it would just deflect. And so this shield was, was there to guard. The shield guard, the shield deflected. The, the shield was the first line of defense. The shield was, uh, in, in, it was to incapitate. It had, it had the possibility of becoming a weapon also. The shield also was something that somebody, they would hide underneath, and they would get underneath, and they would, all of them would get together, and they would all surround them, and they would all surround the top, and they would be able to fight the fiery darts. That's why us all together, fighting together as one, we can come up against all things. The Bible says that the gates of hell cannot prevail of those of the Christian that are coming against the enemy. Amen? That when we all get together and we put our shields together, one can pull a thousand, but two can pull what? Tens of thousands. So the shield of faith is something that you and I must pick up. The Bible says that picking up the shield of faith, it doesn't say God puts it on you. You have to pick it up. It's something that you have to do. Amen? Next one is the belt of truth. All I can say is you don't want to fight with your pants down, okay? So you want, you don't, you want to have a belt, okay? <laughs> the belt was there so that you don't fight, you know, you're, there you are, you're exposed. You know, you don't want, you want, the belt was normally this huge belt. It was thick, and it would cover your kidneys, and it would cover all the vital organs, and it was made of leather, and it was to hold up everything around you, and it was to hold things up, but it was also to protect you. And so if you got stabbed or if you got hit, then you would ha it would be some type of protection. And so this, that was the belt. The shoes of peace was a, a, a metal shoe that they would wear. Reason why is because when they would go to battle, they would throw sharp objects on the, bat on the train. And so when you would come and if you weren't wearing the shoes, you would step on it and, ah, and you would be bleeding all over the place. And so what they said is that the enemy lays traps all the time, but when you've got the spirit of peace, you can go through the valley of the shadow of death because you know God's going to be with me, amen? You can go through those dark places. You can go through those things, and you know the traps are there, but you're like, thank you, Jesus. God is with me. I can do all things through Christ who's with me. I got peace of God on me, and I'm just going to go, and I'm going to march on to what God has for me, amen? When you've got, the, when you've got shoes of peace because peace is ruling your life. Another thing is the sword of the Spirit, and this is the last one. The sword of the Spirit. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is the only defensive weapon that we see. It was the only the defensive weapon that we see that it talks about. And if you're a Christian, this is your sword right here. It was the only offensive weapon that, was that we see. And if guess what? If you don't know the Word of God, then you have nothing to fight with. You have nothing to fight with. Think about it. All I'm doing is just deflecting, deflecting, deflecting. I'm just deflecting, 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 and I'm never, ah. Uh, you're never giving it. You're never going in the offensive. All you're doing, and you know what? That can get tiresome because I know when I'm in Kempo with him, <laughs> and he's, wah, 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 and he's doing this, uh, you know, with this back thing, and I'm like, I'm blocking, blocking, blocking. It gets tiresome. Because I just want to just go, ah! <laughs> just want to just hit him. Why? Because I'm tired of deflecting. I want to now go on the offensive. And the way you go on the offensive, the way you hurt the devil is with this. This is powerful. It's powerful. So in the middle of the night, you look up a scripture. And you're looking, it says, what is he going to say? What is he going to say? And it says here, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is laid upon him. And by his stripes, I am healed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I play my hands on my, my child. And that fever has to go in the name of Jesus. You're on the offensive. You're on the offensive. And when you look at that bill and you see the mounting bills stacking up and you're stacking up and they're stacking up, and you're saying, the Bible says that he's going to provide all our needs are permit according to his riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus. Yes. And you keep on reading another scripture where it says if he, he, he was able to bless those that with the, 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 the boy with the, the, the loaves and fishes. And after everything was there fed, that there was more that was there than what was given at the, at the time. God was able to provide. You're going to see all over the Bible where there was provision that he was God of, he was Jehovah Jireh. He was Jehovah Nisi. He was Jehovah Shalom. He was Jehovah. And he was able to do it. But I'm going to tell you this. You need to learn the word of God. You cannot depend on me. You cannot depend on the church. You're going to have to do it. We'll be here. I'll pray for you. I'll love on you. 
But you have to take the word of God for yourself. You got to say, this is mine. I know everything about this. I know everything about this. I know, I know what I'm in. I know my art. I know, I know, I know as, as I've been in this, this Kempo, it's, it's, you know, one of the things that Jeremy tells us is, hey, you got to know all the ins and you got to know your art. What are all the details? What are all the, all the stuff? What, know all the history. Why? Because if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know. So the whole purpose of Christianity, too, is to know it. Know your stuff. So that you can be a blessing to somebody who says, you know what, I'm going through some problems right now in my, my marriage. I'm going through some, uh, the doctor just told me that I only have three months to live. And instead of going, yeah, man, that's just too bad. Gosh, wish I could help you. Gosh, I'm glad I don't have what you got. Oof. No. Do they need to hear that? You need to be this. You know what? I serve a God that nothing is impossible. I serve a God that he healed them all. I serve a God that the Bible says that if they lay hands on the sick, they will recover. I serve a God, he healed the blind, he healed the lame, he healed the deaf. I, I serve a God that his blood was shed for not only your salvation, but your healing. I serve a God that he loves you. And you're able to get out of this with no scratch, with not, not even the effects of what you had. That's what people need to hear. That's what people need to hear. Because this world is full of junk. And it's time for Christians to stand up for who they are and become the Christians that God has called us to be. Amen? Amen. I tell you this. When we all come together, because I need, every one of us needs each other. I'm going to close here. Alex, would you come up? Jeremy, would you come up? I'm going to use you as examples. I'm fighting. I'm fighting here. But my backside is exposed. So I need Jeremy to be, stand back here. He's going to fight behind me. Thank God he's behind me. <laughs> and whoever is going to attack me from behind, Jeremy's got my back. As a Christian, we, we sharpen one another. I need him just as he needs me. But I'm also exposing this side. So I get the other brother coming, and he stands like this. So now we're fighting like this. The Bible says that a three-chord strand cannot be what? Broken. Where two or more agree with anything on earth, you can do anything. Where two of you agree. And when you're out here fighting alone as a, as a Christian, trying to fight, trying to fight alone, you need the church. You need people in your life. The devil will say, yeah, 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 go over there, go over there. You need people in your life. Nobody can do it on their own. I've met so many pastors who don't have other pastors in their life. I got pastors in my life, I'm telling you. you and they go at it alone, and guess what? They get slaughtered because there's nobody there to hold them up. But whenever I've got men in my life, and I've got other men in my life, and we're fighting together, we can do all things. And whenever I'm hurting and I'm like not feeling good, I've got people to help me up. These guys are going to help me up. Amen? And so I, need, I want you to remember that. Thank you, guys. I want you to remember that you need the church, you need God, you need people. Amen? Because God, there is a supernatural. And you are a supernatural being. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the, for the extra time, Lord, that everyone has, has given, Lord, and the patience, Lord. But I thank you, Lord, for their hunger to learn. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you have come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that the Bible says that we boldly come to the throne of grace to find rest in time of need. We can find mercy and grace. The Bible says that I said, if two of you agree on anything on this earth, that if you ask, it'll be done for you and my Father in heaven. That if you come together in my name, as iron sharpens iron, so does another man sharpen another. The Bible says that a three-chord strand cannot be broken. Father, I, th I thank you, Lord, that we do not fight 
for victory, but we fight from victory. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that the Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, but you belong to God, your dear children. You have already won the victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to raise your hand and say, Lord, I need help. I need, I need, I need help. I, need, I can't do it alone. This sickness, I can't do it alone. This problem, I can't do it alone. I can't go into high school. I can't go into college. I can't go into junior high. I can't go into there without God in my life. I can't go in my own, my own work by myself. I need you. 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 I need you and everything, Lord. Because, Lord, there's a battle going on for my attention. There's a battle going on for my soul. There's a battle going on. But, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that the greater one lives in me. And there's nothing too hard for my God. There's nothing too hard that you cannot take care of. And some of you are facing some giants right now. Some of you are facing some huge giants. Whether it be financial, whether it be uh, physical, whether it be a, a, an ailment, you're facing some giants. Some of you are going through anxiety. Some of you are going through problems. Some of you have been having nightmares. Some of you have been going through all kinds of junk. And you've been blaming God or you've been blaming, where is he? He's there. He's there. But you have the, the authority and the power to invite God in your life and ask him for help. And he will come and he will save us. He will be with us. Come on, I want you to stretch out your hand and just say, Lord, come into my life. Come into my situation. Come into my situation. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life. Hallelujah. Would y'all stand with me? Come on, just stand with me. There's a kingdom of light and there's a kingdom of darkness. It's out there, guys. I'm just making you more aware. But I'm going to tell you this, you're powerful. If you've got God on your side, you are powerful. If you're a Christian, you've got God living in you. The very God who created the atmosphere, this world lives in you. And there's nothing that you cannot do. Because God lives in us. Amen. Close your eyes. I want to ask you, if there's anybody here that's never, if they've ever given their life to Christ, maybe you've never given your life to Christ. I just want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Those of you watching by live stream, and then later on, they'll we'll have it taped and they'll be watching it. Maybe you've never given your life to Christ, and today's the opportunity. You say, hey, I didn't know I was a Christian. I mean, I didn't know I was a spirit person, but now I need to know. Now I need to become a Christian. I need to give my life to Christ. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand here in this, in this auditorium. And those of you that are watching by live stream also, those of you watching, I want you to give your life to Christ. I want you to raise your hand and say, you know what? I'm going to give my life to Christ because I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of God's kingdom. Anybody wants to do that? Anybody out there that's watching too, you raise your hand and you say, Lord, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Lord, come into my life. Lord, I know that you are the Savior. You are the King. You died on, this, you died on the cross and you were, you were raised on the third day. And I accept you as Lord and Savior of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for coming and living inside of me. In Jesus' name, amen. Those of you here, I want to pray with you before we close. I want to pray with you. Some of you are fighting a battle. You're fighting, and you're fighting, and you're fighting, and you're like, man, I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired. Some of you have just started maybe a battle getting tired some of you might be weary some of you just might say you know what pastor I just know I now know who I am I just want to I just I just want to just get more involved in my daily reading as a, as a Christian I want to read the word I want to get I want to be more I want to commit my life more if that's you I want you to come up before we close don't be embarrassed don't be ashamed I want you to come up and says you know what I need you to pray with me I need I need God in my life I need you to pray with me and, and agree with me. Just because you come to the front doesn't mean you got problems. It means that you're willing to give God a chance. Come on. You now know that God, I, I serve a bigger, I serve a God that there's nothing impossible for you. If that's you, I want you to come up. Come on. Those of you that are bold enough to come, because there's going to be a time the Bible says, don't not be ashamed of me in heaven. I will not be ashamed of you. 
Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Those of you that need a touch from God, I believe God is here. I believe God is here and he wants to do great and mighty things. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Shadabasete. Come on, come on. Those of you that say I'm battling something in my life, come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're the Spirit of the 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 Lord. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit. I believe there's more. There's more of you that need to come up. Come on. You're fighting a battle that you need. You need God's help in this. Come on. Those of you that want to come up here and just receive that. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. the spirit of the lord is come on come on where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom hallelujah come on just lift your hands come on just lift your hands here those of you that are up the front i want you to lift your hands i want you to lift your hands hallelujah come on up come on on this way it's a tired
believe this? Amen. Isn't God good? He's a good God. Come on, let's give him a clap. Come on, let's give God praise. I tell you what, the supernatural is as real, it's real. We serve a God that he lives in the supernatural and I want to be a part of that. Amen. Let's just believe God. Let's believe God. You need to be hearing this over and over and over and over again and over again and over again and over again until you get fully convinced. Amen? Don't let nothing change you. Don't let nothing, don't let the enemy trick you. Don't let anybody tell you different. God loves you and he loves every part of you and he wants you to be free. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to be blessed. Amen? God is good. Isn't this a great service? Yes. Wasn't it great? God is so good. I tell you what. If you think this is great, I tell you what.
Tim Story is going to rock your house. He's going to shake the house. I mean, he is, he is just, just. But at the same time, I want you to bring other people. Okay? People need to be saved. People need to be set free. And there's somebody you know. If you can bring one person, bring them. Let's fill it up. Let's fill it up. Let's let Tim Story's like, man, we're, are y'all going to get another building? Yes, we are. <laughs> Y'all need another building. We want it to be so packed in here that we got to go next door too. We got to open the doors. We got to bring them over here. We want it to be so packed. Because I tell you what, when you've got that many people excited for God, anything could happen. Anything can happen. Amen. So I'm gonna, I want to bless you. I want to bless you. Father, Father, I just bless them all, Lord. Bless them as they go, Lord. Everything that they touch, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, that they are not the bottom. They are at the top. That, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that, Lord, you're going to bless them, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, what, what you have blessed, no man can curse. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that, Father, we can do all things through you, Father, who Christ who lives in us. Father, we are champions, Lord. We are overcomers. Father, we're going to be consistently overcoming things in our life. But, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you've already determined that we win. And I thank you, Lord, for the Spirit of God that lives inside of me. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that I will continue to be and have praise and worship in my life, have the word of God active in my life. I will hook up with somebody in the church because I need other people in my life. I, Father, where iron sharpens iron, so another man sharpens another. Lord, I need other people. So, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. We love you and we thank you for this wonderful life you've given us. And we're going to make the best out of it, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Come on. Everybody say amen. amen. Woo! Well, y'all have a blessed Labor Day. Having make it sure it's safe. And then we'll see you again on Sunday. Amen. Greet somebody as you go. Come on, come on. I am free.